touched my mouth and said, Behold, this has touched your lips. Your guilt is taken away, and your sin is atoned for. Let's rise and join again. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Blessed is the one whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. For when I kept silent, my bones wasted away through my groaning all day long. Oh, it was a type in on ours. I acknowledge my sin to you, and I did not cover my iniquity. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord, and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. As we come together to worship in the presence of God, we confess our sins and seek God's grace and mercy. Isaiah was given a vision of God enthroned in the temple, and the prophet was frightened by what he saw. He knew that he was a sinner in the presence of the holy God of Israel. With the prophet, we acknowledge and confess our sins to God and ask for his forgiveness. We join. Almighty God, we know that we are sinners. We do not obey your holy law. We follow our sinful desires and listen to the temptations of the world around us. The prophet confessed that he was unclean. We too are unclean. We have sinned against you in our thoughts, words, and actions. Have mercy on us and forgive our sins. An angel touched the prophet's lips with a coal from the altar of sacrifice and said, your guilt is taken away and your sin atoned for. Isaiah's guilt was taken away. His sins were forgiven. As God showed grace to the prophet, he has shown his grace to us through Jesus' atoning death. I announce to you that your sins are forgiven. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. 
We join. I acknowledge my sin to you, and I did not cover my iniquity. I said I would confess my transgressions to the Lord, and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. The prophet Isaiah was forgiven and sent out to proclaim the message of God's judgment and grace. We too are forgiven and sent out to serve and to witness in Jesus' name. With the prophet, we answer God's call. Right. Yeah. Almighty God, your amazing grace was displayed in the life of the prophet Isaiah. His guilt was taken away and his sins forgiven. You have in grace forgiven us through the atoning sacrifice of Jesus our Lord. You have called us to live in love and service toward others. As we go about our daily lives, help us by your spirit to share with others the love of Jesus and the promise of salvation through faith in his name. Hear our prayer and accept our praise in the name of Jesus, our Lord. Amen. You may be seated as we join in the next hymn. At this time, we'll have the readings from God's Word. Tonight's Old Testament reading is from Isaiah 6, verses 1 through 8. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up. And the train of his robe filled the temple. Above him stood the seraphim, each had six wings. With two, he covered his face, two, he covered his feet, and with two he flew. And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the foundations of the threshold shook at the voice of him who called, and the house was filled with smoke. And I said, Woe is me, for I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the king, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphim flew to me, having in his hand a burning coal that he had taken with tongs from the altar. And he touched my mouth and said, Behold, this has touched your lips. Your guilt is taken away and your sin atoned for. And I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send and whom will go for us? Then I said, Here I am, send me. The epistle reading is from Romans chapter 10, verses 14 through 17. How then will they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how are they to believe in whom they have never heard of? And how are they to hear without someone preaching? 
And how are they to preach unless they are sent? As a written, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the good news, but they have not, but they have not all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah says, Lord, who has believed what he has heard from us? So faith comes from hearing and hearing from the word of Christ. You may remain seated for the reading of the gospel from Matthew chapter 9. And Jesus went throughout all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom and healing every disease and every affliction. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, pray earnestly to the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. We continue with our sermon song. Tonight's dialogue reading is on the prophet Isaiah. Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Have you ever despaired? Has there ever been a time when meaningless and hopelessness seemed to pervade your spirit and where you cannot find light beyond the darkness? If so, you are not alone. Many, indeed, most of the faithful have gone through such times along with the vast multitude of humanity. But we are also not alone in such times because God is with us and God's promising word to us in such times speaks a message of hope. Comfort. Oh, comfort, my people, says your God. A time would come for the people of Israel when the glory days of their kingdom would be a distant memory. There would be no more boasting of the great city of Jerusalem or the great temple for these would be leveled in ruins, and the only ones to rule over them were kings of foreign lands. This would be the time of exile. To make matters worse, they knew that their exile was their just desert for sins they had committed. The prophets of Israel warned that a day of judgment was coming when they would be held accountable for their injustices against the poor and the marginalized, for their false worship of other gods, and for their vain boasting in their own superiority. Even though these prophets were ignored and ridiculed, this day of judgment came, and the exile marked their own guilt. Now the scars of their exile weighed heavily upon their spirits. Their days were filled with emptiness, their faith in God grew cold and faint, and their hearts were filled with despair. But then, God would bring a new message to them through the prophet Isaiah. Unlike other prophetic messages of the past, 
There was no warning and judgment. Instead, God proclaimed an enlivening message of amazing grace and abundant good news. Comfort. Oh, comfort, my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that she has served her term, that her penalty is paid, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. Who among us does not welcome a message of comfort when we find our own spirits weighed down heavily by anxiety and despair? Who among us, especially when we know the depth of our own sins and the guilt of our conscience, would not value the precious grace of God, sharing words of comfort and consolation, where God seeks us out not to judge us, but to speak tenderly to us, to nurture us back to wholeness in life, to set us upon a new path of righteousness and hope. God does not leave his people in despair and judgment, and death is never the last word. The last word is always God's word of enduring grace, and we may count on the everlasting promise of that saving word. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God will stand forever. God's promising word speaks hope. God's word declares an end to the chains of exile and declares instead that all prisoners of despair and judgment are now set free. Moreover, God's word declares that their journey to freedom will be seen before the eyes of all of humanity as a testimony for all of God's enduring and glorious grace. A voice cries out, in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places a plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all people shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken." Isaiah describes the wilderness itself will become transformed before their very eyes. Instead of a land of dryness and loneliness, God will make it of it a place of welcoming beauty and streaming rivers. I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert to give drink to my chosen people. For the Lord will comfort Zion. He will comfort all her waste places and will make her wilderness like Eden her desert, like the garden of the Lord. Joy and gladness will be found in her thanksgiving and the voice of song. And when this joyous journey across the wilderness reaches its destination and home is in sight, then the people will raise their voices and praise to the God who fulfills their gracious journey. Here is your God. See, the Lord God comes with might and his arm rules for him. His reward is with him, and his recompense before him. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms and carry them in his bosom, and gently lead the mother sheep. We know of another prophetic voice who cried out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. John the Baptist pointed to Jesus the Christ as our liberator. Here is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Jesus, the Christ, is the living Word of God. He will bring forth righteousness and hope for all who are despairing. Here is my servant, whom I uphold, my chosen, in whom my soul delights. I have put my spirit upon him. He will bring forth justice to the nations. He will not cry or lift up his voice or make it heard in the street. A bruised reed he will not break, and a dimly burning wick he will not quench. Jesus, the living word of God, will comfort all who are desperate and defeated and shine his light upon the darkness. A light to the nations, to open the eyes that are blind, to bring out the prisoners from the dungeon, from the prisons, those who sit in darkness. Jesus, the living word of God, casts out all our fear and forgives us all our sins. Do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. I, I am he who blots out your transgressions for my own sake, and I will not remember your sins. Jesus, the living word of God, sits at table with disgraced sinners, 
welcoming and befriending them, even as he freely hosts us with his forgiveness at his own table of grace. Oh, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters, and you that have no money, come buy and eat. Come buy wine and milk without money and without price. Yet such promise for us does not come cheaply. Jesus, the living word of God, does not only accompany us through the wilderness of our own sin, but follows the path that will lead him to the cross and all its shame. He had no form or majesty that we should look to him, nothing in his appearance that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by others, a man of suffering and acquainted with infirmity. And as one from whom others hide their faces, he was despised, and we held no account of him. We follow this suffering servant Jesus to the cross so that we might behold his saving grace. We trust that he was willing to pay the, the great price for our sins in order that we all might be made whole in his righteousness and healed from all our despair. Surely. He has borne our infirmities and carried our diseases. Yet we accounted him stricken, struck down by God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the punishment that made us whole. And by his bruises, we are healed. At such great cost, God desires that all of humanity should be saved and that none should perish. The righteous one, my servant, shall make many righteous, and he shall bear their iniquities. He bore the sin of many and made intercession for the transgressors. To be sure, in our own lives, we may experience the despairing wilderness. We may come to suffer the truth of our guilt and shame, the disgrace of remorse and defeat, and even fear and anxiety in the shadows of death. But over all of that wilderness... We dare to trust that Jesus, the living word of God, brings new grace for our lives. Behold, I am about to do a new thing. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? He who would not break a bruised reed or extinguish a dimly burning wick will indeed faithfully bring us to hope over all despair. Jesus, the living word of God, is with us in our journey through the wilderness and sees us through to the very promising end, we will be brought home in peace and joy. So shall my word be that goes out of my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I purpose and succeed in the thing for which I sent it. For you shall go out in joy and be led back in peace. Whenever our thoughts become dark, and we are dying in the wilderness of our sins. Whenever we are caught in the depths of despair and the harsh isolation of exile, whenever we cannot imagine anything possibly good for our lives and all our plans go to waste, then comes God in Jesus the Christ to shine on our darkness. Do not despair. You shall not die, but live, and shall come to know the fullness of God's grace and promise through Jesus the Christ, then our darkened imaginations will give way to God's own brilliant light. My thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. Instead of defeat and despair, there are sure and certain signs of comfort and joy, healing and hope. We lay hold of this through our faith in Christ. Through faith, we get to declare the everlasting promises of God as though they are our very own to proclaim, even as they were for the prophet Isaiah. For we are witnesses of God's living word, Jesus the Christ. And through that word, we are blessed messengers of his good news. How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of the messenger who announces peace, who brings good news, who announces salvation, who says to Zion, your God reigns. In Jesus' name, amen. We'll continue singing Amazing Grace.
rise. We join together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended to heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Congregation may be seated as we receive God's tithes and offerings. Also just a, a time to reflect on the forgiveness of Christ and, and how much he, he put into allowing us to just be assured of that forgiveness. Eight centuries, eight centuries before he came to this world, that's when Isaiah wrote his book. Think about that. rise. We pray. Almighty God, your grace is the favor you show to undeserving sinners. Just as you showed grace to the prophet Isaiah and forgave his sins, you have forgiven us for the sake of Jesus, our Savior. Gracious Lord, have mercy on us and hear our prayer. Almighty God, during the season of Lent, a time of repentance, we remember that Jesus was sacrificed for our sins on the altar of the cross. As Isaiah's sins were burned away with a coal from the temple altar, our sins are washed away in Jesus' blood. Gracious Lord. Amen. Almighty God, we pray for our brothers and sisters in Christ who are suffering illness, sorrow, and grief. Lead us by your Spirit to comfort them with the promises of your holy word and to bring help to them in their time of need. Gracious Lord. Almighty God, Isaiah was quick to answer your call. You sent him out with the message of your power and love. You asked, whom shall I send? Bless the pastors, teachers, missionaries, and others who answered your call and said, here I am, send me. Watch over them and protect them as they proclaim the gospel of salvation. By the power of your spirit, extend your kingdom through the preaching of the good news. Gracious Lord. Almighty God, you have forgiven our sins. Now, by the power of your Spirit, make us bold witnesses for our Savior. You ask, whom shall I send? Lead us to answer with joy. Here I am. Send me. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thy is the kingdom and the power and the glory. <coughs> Amen. Your guilt is taken away and your sin atoned for. And I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send and who will, who will go for us? The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all.
You may be seated. Oh, yes. I'll tell you what. I know. 